Hey folks, welcome back to MoGraphPlus.com. It's Khazri here with you and we're going to be doing some studio lighting in Arnold for Cinema 4D. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go to my render setting and make sure I have Arnold as my main render. Go to your output and let's change the film aspect to HD here and lock the ratio. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous tutorial, I have a bit different layout when I work with Arnold. I have my Arnold plugin options here, so plugin. C42A, I have these options docked here, and I have my IPR window docked here. So make sure you do that or you know work with your uh, desired layout. And also I have this abstract 3D object in my scene. Let's get started by creating a stage for our studio. Add a cube, go to your cube, increase your X size, something like 400 centimeter. Let's add some about three segments to X2 to Y and 2 to Z. Hit N and B so you have your grass shading lines. Shading, hit C and hit 9 to go to your uh, selection tool. Go to your. There we go. Let's select this polygons here, here, and also hold on shift and select these guys and delete them. And let's hit Control and A, select all the polygons, right click and reverse the normals. There we go. And right now I uh, can go to my mesh, axis center, axis center, go to negative 100 on Y, execute that and zero out the Y axis. Hold on Alt and add a subdivision surface while your cube is selected. So now we have this kind of simple stage the next thing would be to create a camera. Let's go to that camera. Let's adjust our viewing angle a bit. You know, to something maybe like this. Wouldn't be so bad. So that's basically our stage. And uh, now it's time to add our lights. So let's get out of this camera for a moment and click on Arnold Light. If you go to your light tab, you can here basically specify what type of light uh, you need to select. Obviously, when the time comes to uh, studio lighting, uh, we are going to use area lights. And in Arnold, you have three types of area lights. You got your cylinder light, your disk light, and your uh, quad light, which quad light is uh, that rectangular area light uh, shapes that we are familiar with in Cinema 4D, for example. So when you want to create an area light, uh, you go to a quad light, especially a, a rectangular area light. So let's kind of move it, hit R, rotate it about 90 degrees. There we go. Hit E, pull it up. Hit T, scale it down a bit. And let's move it to about here. So that's basically our first light, which is going to be our left light. Let's me control and drag this light to the right side. Sorry. Let's rotate it 180 degrees. Now we need to duplicate it again. That's going to be our right light. And this third light is going to be our top light. Okay. Let's move it to here. Rotate it one, about 90 degrees, move it down a bit, select the lights, go to your main tab and let's increase its height a bit till we have something like this. Now we can go to our camera and basically start our IPR. So let's start our IPR and see what we get. So that's what we have obviously, it's quite dark. And if you select uh, all of your three lights, uh, in Arnold you have two parameters to increase or decrease the intensity and the brightness of your light. Basically, you got your intensity and you got your exposure. Now, intensity is uh, for more subtle changes. So if you want to uh, change your lighting a bit, you're going to go ahead and kind of uh, increase and decrease your intensity. And you use your exposure for more drastic change. So for example, if you want to uh, double your exposures in a one uh, a move, you're going to go ahead and change your exposure from zero to one. And now, 
uh, exposure is basically uh, works like f stop so uh, when you go from one to two for example you are going to double the intensity of your light from two to three uh, you're doubling it again again so that's how it uh, works uh, personally i tend to uh, kind of uh, you know a mix between the two uh, if I want to change my uh, the intensity of my light and the brightness of my light uh, a bit I in uh, tweak the intensity and if I want a, a bit more drastic change I go with exposure uh, so let's I'm going to increase my exposure something like two and increase my intensity maybe to something like this okay obviously the scene is extremely noisy and I want to add uh, specific material to this abstract 3D object that we have here. So I'm going to my create Arnold, Arnold surface and standard shader. It's going to be very simple. Just increase the weight of your diffuse. Uh, and I'm going to definitely uh, create a free tutorial uh, discussing the standard shader in uh, Arnold, which is like Uber shader. It does everything. So let me go to something like 0.92 would be enough and let's apply to the abstract 3d object that we have okay so it isn't that bad uh, the most obvious problem that I can see right now as you can see we have this uh, very dark areas uh, and the reason is if you go to your render setting go to your Arnold render and come down to your ray depth uh, add them in the diffuse which is basically like GI uh, is set to one so we're just gonna get one uh, bounces of our light rays if I go ahead and uh, you know put it to two now we are basically as you take a take a look at this very dark areas here for example this is uh, basically zero very dark one you can see it gets brighter two we're gonna get more bounces and the scene is gonna be more realistic obviously as you increase your uh, for example diffuse rate depth here you're gonna uh, go ahead and increase your render time at the same time so let's uh, maybe decrease this refraction and this reflection go to your sampling uh, at the moment you can see we have tons of uh, noises in our scene so the first thing i want to do is select all of my three lights now i can go ahead and increase my samples let's go to something like three and that would really help to reduce the noise amount I'm going to increase my overall uh, camera uh, AA to about 4, increase my diffuse sample to something like 3. At the moment we don't have much of glossy reflections or refraction or subsurface scattering so I can safely decrease them and that would kind of help to have a cleaner render. Maybe I can uh, change this to something like 5. Okay. So that's what we have at the moment. Uh, one very important thing that I uh, notice here, if you take a look at this frontal part of our uh, abstract 3D object, it's kind of dark comparing to this uh, top part, this uh, right or left part. And the reason is quite obvious. If I get out of the camera and uh, the environment is quite dark, so this dark environment is going to have effect on our object. In order to kind of avoid that, uh, a very simple uh, thing to do would be to add a reflector. So I can come down here, add a plane. Let's rotate it about 90 degrees. Okay, there you go. Obviously it's so huge. So I'm going to hit T and make it smaller. Let's put it there. I don't wanna affect the stage that much. So I'm going to reduce it a bit more and make it smaller get back to the camera now obviously uh, it's in front of the camera so right click C42A tag Arnold parameter tag and I can turn off its primary visibility it still affect the scene but we're not gonna see it which is perfect in this case now as you can see by adding this reflector we are basically uh, making this very dark parts uh, to be a bit brighter so if I turn off this plane this is the result that we're gonna get and if I turn it on as you can see we are basically filling in those very dark areas so there you go and obviously I can create a material for these so let's open it up that's going to be our uh, front reflector and if I apply this material to my 
Brunt Reflector. Now I can simply make this kind of darker, make it brighter, uh, change the color. If I want to, for example, introduce some uh, warm tone to my scene, I can simply go ahead and uh, change the color. And as you can see uh, how uh, easy and powerful it is. And it's in the viewport, so let me just hide it. There you go. And this is a very useful way adding reflectors and controlling uh, the way those light rays kind of work in your scene. So that's about it. And another, let me also actually make sure this is just, let's make it to be default, maybe just a tad brighter. So we don't have that very dark areas. Now, another thing you can do is obviously to change the color of your light. At the moment, all of our lights are white, as you can see, but we can actually change the color of this light and add different tones to our scene. So for example, I can go to my left light, and as you can see, you have this detail tab, which is super useful, and you have this use color temperature option. If you turn it on now, you can actually control the color of your light based on Kelvin uh, temperature degrees. So if you go to a very low wall you like, for example, 4000, 2000, as you can see, our left light is getting much more warmer. And if I go to a uh, wall you uh, more than 6,600, as you can see, you're getting this kind of warm, uh, this kind of a blue, cool uh, tone to our scene. So let's go ahead and maybe make this uh, left light kind of blue, go to the right light, uh, turn on use color temperature, make this one uh, very uh, warm, something like this. And as you can see, we have introduced this nice coloration and nice uh, warm, cool balance to our scene using this color. Obviously, if you want a much more specific colors, uh, you have your color option and uh, you can uh, use whatever color you want. But uh, I kind of tend to use this use color temperature maybe all the time to add those uh, cool and uh, warm uh, tones to my scene. So that's uh, it for the moment. Let's go ahead and render this and see what we're going to get. So let's render this. Also, let's make sure it's uh, 1280 by 720. And let's shift R and re render our scene. So here is our beautiful render. And as you can see, we have introduced some. Uh, nice uh, warm cool balance into our scene and uh, let me just close this now there are a lot of things you can do to make your scene a bit more interesting possibly you can turn off one of your lights okay or turn off the left light also now we just lighting our scene using our top light I can just use uh, my right light I can I don't know uh, make my left light to have uh, let's go ahead to work with our intensity a bit and now as you can see it's very simple to go ahead and add some uh, contrast to your scene so let me just uh, increase this and get back to where we were before okay okay let's Six and turn on the top light here. There you go. Let's decrease this value. Two. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, instead of using lights, as I mentioned, you can actually use reflectors. So, for example, I can create another plane quickly here, and let's uh, rotate it, and obviously make it smaller, and move it to here okay make it a bit bigger and that's going to be our right reflector maybe let's come down here get back to the camera so right now what I can do I can turn off my right light and if I turn off my right reflector as you can see we uh, if you want to introduce just uh, a tad more uh, lighting to our scene I can simply use a reflector instead of a light so it's just a simple object if you turn it on you can see how this part gets a bit lighter and obviously I can create 
another material for this one. So let's go to our right reflector here. Let's apply this material to our right reflector, turn it on. And now you can simply go ahead and change the color of your reflector to whatever you want, you know, and this way you can see you can add that tone to your studio environment simply using a reflector. If you don't want that harsh effect of light, you can uh, do that using a reflector. So that's about these reflectors too. And now you can really be creative and uh, add different lights to your scene. For example, I can add an Arnold light. Let's just hit E and put it somewhere like here and put it back a bit. And now we're basically making our background to be a bit more bright. I can reduce the overall intensity here, something like this. I can reduce the overall intensity of my right and left lights to make that point light a bit more prominent here. And now we have this render. Obviously, I don't want to uh, cast any shadow from this light. So I can turn off cast shadow for my point light. As you can see, this is a point light at the moment. And now this is the result that we're getting. Okay. can go ahead maybe render this out and see what's gonna happen so here is our render and as you can see it's so beautiful just be creative add some light re remove some light increase the intensity of some light just add some contrast and you can get uh, very exciting results from your uh, lighting now uh, I can go ahead and actually duplicate this standard material and maybe uh, add some sort of uh, reflectivity to this. Okay, add some Fresnel here. Maybe something like seven, something like this. Let's apply this to our abstract 3D object. In this case, I'm going just to turn off the point light for the moment and make sure these guys are having the exact same intensity that they had before also for my for my top light and uh, let's now you can go ahead and actually create different materials and apply to your uh, main object now as you can see this is a, a kind of reflective object but when the time comes to highly reflective object for example like chrome now uh, in that case the placement of your lights is everything basically the reflection is everything so you need to make sure uh, you uh, put your light in a very exact places so you get some nice reflection now that's a very complex uh, matter and if you are interested we can go ahead and record a tutorial about that and talk about that together but uh, that would be much more uh, complex when the time comes to uh, rendering highly reflective objects uh, it needs special care but in this case if you want to go for uh, some general rendering that would really uh, work the uh, s uh, technique that I showed you here in this tutorial and you can go ahead and enjoy and uh, work with different types of lights uh, you obviously have your mesh lights so uh, in Arnold if you want to convert uh, uh, an object to be a source of your light for example uh, if I create this uh, big sphere here maybe reduce the size I can simply go ahead and maybe boost it a bit more I can simply right click and add an Arnold mesh light and as you can see also can make it visible that uh, you can use this uh, different types of light sources in Arnold to create some uh, really nice and creative studio lighting in Arnold for Cinema 4D. Now, um, as I mentioned before, studio lighting is a very complex matter and if you are interested, uh, there are so many uh, things to really cover. Okay folks, so that's about studio lighting in Arnold for Cinema 4D. Make sure to check out our website mographplus.com. We've got tons of premium and free tutorials. Uh, we got this uh, advanced uh, 3D motion graphics in Cinema 4D and Real Flow, which is a very cool project based 
uh, project in Cinema 4D and RealFlow. Very cool tutorial. Go there and check it out. We got our Maxwell Render course. We got our Vue4 Cinema 4D course. Uh, we got our uh, project-based motion graphic courses like Cubicle, Box Project, our GIFT project, and we have our realistic interior visualization in very for Cinema 4D industri industrial style room. Make sure to check them all and also make sure to follow us on uh, Vimeo, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We're going to be releasing tons of uh, Arnold for Cinema 4D free tutorials in the upcoming weeks, so make sure to uh, follow our uh, channels uh, in YouTube and Vimeo. Uh, so thank you for watching, see you next time.